Hello everyone, my name is Alex and today I wanted to talk about some of the effects of the worldwide grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX, specifically its impact on Canada and Canadian travelers. There are 41 Boeing 737 MAXs currently registered in Canada, all of which are MAX 8s. To begin, here's a brief timeline of events from this past week. Sunday, March 10th, the world is shaken by the tragic loss of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, a Boeing 737 MAX 8. Following this, the Civil Aviation Administration of China grounds the nation's fleet of 737 MAXs, setting things in motion for other countries to do the same. Monday, March 11th, several airlines begin suspending operations of their 737 MAXs, including carriers like Aeromexico, Silk Air, and Jet Airways. Tuesday, March 12th, the United Kingdom bans the 737 MAX from its airspace, forcing Air Canada to cancel two of its transatlantic flights with the MAX, these being Air Canada Flight 860 from Halifax to London Heathrow and Air Canada Flight 822 from St. John's also going to London Heathrow. Later that day, Sunwing Airlines announced that they would be voluntarily suspending their 737 MAX operations. In a press release, they stated that this was due to evolving commercial reasons unrelated to safety, including airspace restrictions imposed by some of our partner destinations. Wednesday, March 13th, Canada's Minister of Transport, Mark Garneau, announced that Canada would restrict commercial passenger flights from any operator of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 or MAX 9 variant aircraft. With this, the United States made their own announcement and the 737 MAX was officially grounded worldwide. In Canada, three airlines operate the 737 MAX. They are Sunwing Airlines, WestJet Airlines, and Air Canada. Of these, Sunwing has the fewest, with four 737 MAXs in their fleet. In their press release, they stated that we will endeavor to minimize the impact of these schedule changes, which we believe is achievable given that the MAX 8 makes up less than 10% of our fleet. WestJet has 13 737 MAX 8 aircraft in their fleet, and they've stated that over 92% of our fleet is operating as usual. While there may be some interruptions to our schedule as we mitigate the impact of this decision, you can book with confidence knowing that WestJet continues to fly throughout our network with the safety of guests and employees at the forefront. That was straight from an email I got as a WestJet Rewards member. Air Canada is currently the largest operator of the 737 MAX in the country, with 24 aircraft. On the grounding, Air Canada stated that they are working to rebook impacted customers as soon as possible, but given the magnitude of our 737 MAX operations, which on average carry 9 to 12,000 customers per day, customers can expect delays in rebooking and in reaching Air Canada call centers, and we appreciate our customers' patience. So, where are all of Canada's MAXs now? For the time being, the aircraft are banned from passenger flights, but airlines in Canada and the U.S. are still permitted to operate ferry flights with no passengers on board. For WestJet and Air Canada, quite a few aircraft were operating flights to the U.S. at the time of the announcement and were allowed to land, but eventually flew back to Canada empty. Since then, all three airlines have moved their fleets around the country for storage, maintenance, or refitting purposes. Sunwing's four aircraft are all stored at Windsor International Airport in Ontario. WestJet's MAX fleet is spread out a bit more, with one in Toronto, one in Hamilton, three in Vancouver, three in Kelowna, and five in Calgary. The three in Kelowna are making use of the downtime to get the new 2x2 premium seating installed, and it's possible that more aircraft could head there while the grounding is in effect. Air Canada's fleet is even more spread out at the moment. Right now, there's two in Halifax, three in Vancouver, three in Calgary, five in Trois-Rivières, five in Winnipeg, and six in Windsor. Windsor currently has the largest total number of 737 MAXs, with 10 on the ground there, followed by Calgary with 8 and Vancouver with 6. An important part of picking these locations is that, in one way or another, they all have maintenance facilities for these aircraft. By having the airplanes there already, they're prepared to implement any fixes that Boeing might issue in the coming weeks, and just get these airplanes back in the air as soon as they can. For now, Canada's 41 Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft will not be flying passengers, and the effects will undoubtedly be felt across all three operators for some time to come. To cover for their loss of capacity, Sunwing has leased two Eastern Airlines Boeing 767 aircraft. They still have 39 737-800s operating primarily from Canadian cities to Sun destinations, and it's not clear exactly where these 767s will operate just yet. In WestJet's case, the reduction of 13 aircraft from their mainline fleet of 129 aircraft is certainly not ideal. With three 7879 Dreamliners now in the fleet though, WestJet has some extra domestic capacity and some additional flights are already operating between Calgary and Toronto with the Dreamliners. This helps to clear the backlog of passengers but also to reallocate smaller aircraft to other routes. The Dreamliners were always meant to operate domestically in March and April for training purposes. 
but before they start their transatlantic flights, the 787s can be very helpful and have enough seats to essentially replace two 737s. For Air Canada, losing 21% of their mainline narrowbody fleet is even less ideal, however they do have the largest wide body fleet in the country with 75 twin aisle aircraft. So far, Air Canada has been able to deploy wide-body aircraft to cover some of these flights, including this 777 from Vancouver to Honolulu. However, there aren't nearly enough spare wide-body aircraft to completely replace the MAX fleet. In the long term, it's possible that we could see some aircraft retirements delayed, as well as more aircraft being leased, depending on how long the situation lasts. To put things into perspective, the operational loss of the 737 MAX results in over 7,000 seats every day that WestJet, Air Canada and Sunwing now have to replace by combining flights, using larger aircraft, rebooking passengers, it's an operational headache all around. Keep in mind, the 737 MAXs all flew multiple flights a day, so that number is actually several times larger. All in all, it's a very undesirable situation for airlines and passengers alike, but potentially a necessary one in the name of safety. This is still a developing situation and circumstances could change, so I suggest you go follow me on Twitter at AlexPYYC for updates as they become available. Thank you very much for watching, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, do consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.